Hi everybody and welcome to the latest episode of Mrs Mummy Penny Talks and this week I am here with my very good friend Jennifer Kempson otherwise known as Mama Fafa to talk about a subject that we are so both both so passionate about which is healthy body and mind and how that links into personal finances um, and I'm so grateful you can join me today on the podcast. This is exciting. I know this is a second appearance. I'm very excited to come back. <laughs> it, it, you've, you've been invited back. You've made it to the shortlist for season four. Um, yeah, I think so. Last time we spoke, I'll pop a link in of our last interview because that was more about it was almost about your life and mm-hmm. um, how yep. you got to it. And I think we recorded it maybe a year and a half ago. It was a while, yeah. We were been, obviously, we haven't aged. We haven't aged in any way, so it's well. Fine. I think we got younger. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got maybe better lighting. <laughs> yes, no, no, no never. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so this is um, this is going to be available on um, YouTube video. So, if you want to see our beautiful faces, go to my YouTube channel, and obviously our podcast audio as well. Um, but um, yes, thank you for coming on. So we need to do a little bit of a recap as to who you are and why you do what you do. So I will start with a little bit of a why you're amazing, because um, I always like to do that. Uh, so I, th- I think we've known each other for maybe two or three years. Uh, we three we years, have I actually think met in person. I know, I know. <laughs> before COVID. Before COVID. Because I've interviewed like quite a lot of people, uh, people like Timmy, Mr. Money Jar, um, who else? Oh, pe- just people that I haven't actually met face to face. I'm like, <laughs> but I know you so well from Instagram. <laughs> and um yeah, exactly, exactly. but um yeah so um yeah we've known each other for about two or three years you have an incredible youtube channel uh you are basically one of my favorite personal finance youtubers you have like eighty five thousand subscribers which is crazy that you're so close to six figures do you get an award for six figures i do i've got a place in the bathroom specially saved for it that's going to be my my thing so you get a plaque you get a plaque with your channel name on it I know I can't well you know whenever it happens that'd be beautiful so it's got a place in the bathroom especially for it yeah oh that's so exciting and you have um, a very successful podcast um but YouTube is your baby isn't it it's your thing yes it absolutely is so I've been on YouTube for about three and a half years now um and so I talk about personal finance entrepreneurship a little bit about quite a bit about prosperity mindset as well so we also recently have we've done a podcast for the past year and a bit um, all about prosperity so what we'll be covering on this uh, show today but that I've just put on the mama for her channel as well so you can actually see the video podcast the past yeah. month we've been doing that so yeah it's all exciting <laughs> yeah yeah and you've had um you've got you've got a totally different like success story um well we've all got different stories but I think how your business has grown it was just in a very very different way to me where I think mine has been more of a slow build and actually a lot of the quite successful people in our world seems to have been quite a slow build but yours doesn't seem to it doesn't it hasn't felt like it's been slow it felt like it's been really quite a quick growth in the last sort of 12 to 18 months since we had that last conversation that's probably it and um, so that was it past, <laughs> I know. And, and maybe that was it I, I need to send you a 10 percent cut um no yeah. the, and certainly for me in the past year um I've even left my corporate life job as a result so as I started three years ago three and a half years ago the intention was never you know to do this full time it was just passion it was just wanting to share with people but actually it's ended up being that we got to a point quite quickly maybe a year year and a half in where my husband retired from corporate life and then the business or you know what I was doing for fun was making resources available that we could do this full time so it's been an ex- it's been a really it feels maybe a bit quick to some people but actually I think when you're the person it feels slow <laughs> you're like it feels like it's just been you know naturally pausing the long home time but you know very thankful for where we are yeah yeah I I, I I'm grateful every single day for the life that um I have managed to build for myself like equally like the life you've managed to build for yourself and it's come through 
a lot of hard work and quite a lot of um <laughs> quite a lot of doubting myself along the way and and mental health struggles but um mm-hmm. it it's it's worked out and I so, so the 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 basis of this podcast is to talk about healthy body and mind right because so Mrs. Mummy Penny has always been built around this strap line of healthy wealth, body and mind. Um, mm. And, and I've, I've had a bit of a debate with several people in the past as to what comes first. And I've pretty much made up my mind that healthy, okay. well, <laughs> go for it. What, so what does come first? And we can debate. It's inside out. It's completely mm. inside out about life. Um, and I'm learning that more and more actually I think the more you see of life and also you allow your potential to show and I think the the beautiful thing about being a creator is you're really testing your limits of what your value might be in the world like being open to actually be to see circumstances or things change as a as a result of you just sharing what feels like insights or you know a little story about your life somebody else could resonate with so I, I really love the life that we have um, because it feels like I can be my fullest expression. I can mm-hmm. be, I can get up in the morning and, and say, okay, how do I want to serve? Or, you know, what do I want to add to the world? And you create it and you get to then stand back and go, oh, well, if somebody likes it or if they don't, you know, that's the thing. But I think it, it is inside out and it's probably the opposite of what the world would teach you where it's outside in. Totally, yeah. So with with a lot of things in life that um so situations that come to hit us that are potentially hurtful um i think we have to well i mean let's let's use some examples um it's it's you always have to go in here first and really think about what's happening and your reaction to that um situation yeah you have to think about it yourself but more often than not you have to reach out for help to from somebody be that I don't know let's let's say I'm looking at my cat Trevor in the garden let's say something's happened <laughs> to the cats and yeah. it's a, and and it's a really horrible situation that something's happened to your cat and you need to reach out to somebody for some help maybe it's something a lot more serious like uh like my mum died and that's not really something you can cope with just talking to a friend mm. you need mm. to reach out for external um therapy help from the nhs or from you know private private therapy if you can afford it um but yeah it's and 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 if you don't it's going to then impact on your physical health mm. which yeah. and it will also impact on your financial health so it's like whatever situation is going on in your life be that good or bad um bad or good you'd have to start here you really do absolutely everything in life is driven by our thoughts and our feelings and it's actually even your feelings about the thoughts that you're having because two people or three people can be in the exact same circumstance and have completely different experiences and a lot of the way we then feel about the world is can be physically transformed in our body. Um, I know, for example, you mentioned about trauma. It is well documented that, you know, trauma, the mind has to process trauma. Right? It's not just a thing you can think out. There is actually a shift almost in the brain. It needs to go from one part of your brain, which is like short-term memory. It needs to then be processed to long-term. And sometimes even that process can have physical repercussions as your mm-hmm. body's learning to do and I've shared in the last episode I had a psychotic episode two and a half years ago Mm. and I'm becoming more aware on this journey that actually that could well have been my body trying to move into different parts of memory and it being a a physical manifestation in some way so it it truly like everything comes from your thoughts and feelings I can't stress that enough obviously you know we can be bystanders in other people's experiences of the world like we're not an island you know if somebody feels a certain way and then decides to inflict something on you or chooses something you're going to feel the ripple effect but there there is that level of actually you have you can have a thought but my feeling about it has multiple outcomes it's not a set feeling that I have to feel about something Mm. and um I think there's a point to make there about control as well 
um, which is a discussion I've had with many people is, um, well, I'll, I'll use myself as an example where I, I'm a little bit of a control freak, um, quite a lot of a control freak. Um, and, but I know why, because like my parents died when I was a teenager and I lost all control of my life. So therefore control right. is very important to me. It's, you know, 20 years of therapy has taught me that. Right. And I've still not, I'll, I'll still never completely resolve it. I just know it's something that I'm just going to have to deal with until the day I die. But um, so, yeah, being in control is very important to me. But what I've come to realize probably over the last sort of in my 40s, where I think we all go through a bit of an epiphany during our 40s, where life, I just think things change a bit, um, is that there's only certain things I can actually control. Mm, and yeah. basically the only thing you really can control, it, it's almost like I can control how much water I drink and what food I put in my mouth and I can control what exercise I do today. Um, I'm not sure, I can't really control my thoughts because- mm, Nope, you're not meant to. <laughs> no, no. And you certainly can't control anybody else. <laughs> like. <laughs> You can't I, I can't control what you're going to say next can I no, so no. and once you understand that and just you know digest it I think that gives you quite an em empowered feeling isn't it that oh mm. actually wow I know what I can actually control now and that helps with the control because I should never I should never describe myself as a control freak that I shouldn't have started off saying that should I <laughs> because I've you know got to grips with it but um but yeah. that's it so any thoughts that we have it's not like with positivity that you're meant to like kind of replace like I can't have a negative thought ever that's not how the brain is just received you know you're thinking things that you can't control it's more about what you do as a result as in what's the mm. feeling and I think with money in particular we mm. put a lot we give a lot of power actually to money and circumstances mm. that it doesn't really it doesn't really have we almost shift it to decide what we're allowed to do or what we're allowed to think about ourselves. I'm very in tune right now that it seems like financial shaming is becoming more and more of a thing. There's a lot of kind of communities that um, you must feel bad if you've got debt or you must feel this way if you've got credit cards. And, you know, we seem to have shifted. It seems to be another thing that now it's OK to shame people in certain circumstances with money. And I have always said from the word go, you know, when you've made decisions about money, if you know one month you've overspent or you've taken out credit, you have literally done the best you could do with what you saw in that moment based on your knowledge. It was the best. It might it might not have felt the best, but it was mm. all you knew how to do in that mm. kind of fight, fight or flight situation. Mm. But it doesn't mean that a week later or a day later that you can't decide to feel differently or do something else. Like you won't repeat that in the past. I'm choosing something different and mm. I, I think in the financial world it can be it's kind of like politics you're either you know you've got to be this is how you do things or this and I think money it should actually be just an expression of who you are again it should flow and change yeah um, it should be what is your priority right now will be different from 10 years from now and you know and all those kind of things and almost I'd love to see people take away the feelings from money yeah. because um I, I read it, a great thing in a, in a book just today actually saying that it's kind of like going outside in the rain and blaming the amount of rain on the fact you've got an umbrella or not so kind of we associate the money coming in is the fact that we've got things that prepared us and money appears in our life because of the value we give to the world, not because, oh, we didn't spend on a credit card this month. Oh, I paid off this. Do you see how we make it all external? Yeah, yeah, when actually yeah. it's just, it's your self-expression and helping people that will be rewarded with money ultimately. Yeah, that's that's a really interesting theory. Um, I've done a lot of work in over lockdown, actually, on the... Um, the psychological impact around sort of money values um and I, I did it like for me to understand mm. to understand why money was so important to me so uh, you have to you have to like my my a potted version of my life like I went to university to do a maths degree because I figured that was the best degree I could do to get paid a lot of money then I mm. went to work for a bank uh, then I trained to become an accountant because I thought that's going to get me paid a really good salary, which it did. Yep. Um, 
I, I went to I went to work for Tesco's because I was like, right, they're the best retailer. And and I was very intentional about making all these decisions. And mm. and it all just came to me. Like I'm I mean, I suppose I was good at interviews, I was good at my jobs, but yeah, I went to work <laughs> for Tesco's and money, 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 money was always very important, like moving up the structure. Mm. Um not putting money aside for the future. What was important to me was almost like just the status of, oh, I'm earning. 50 grand a year by the time I'm 27 or whatever and um yeah. I can afford this car and that handbag yeah um, but um but what I what I took it all back to and it does it really really does go back to um my mum and my dad is uh, and it's all to do with my house actually so so we all lived in a house in Penzance together and when my dad died, um, he he was actually married to somebody else in between. So my stepmom, who I get on really well with, she's a really lovely person, and we um, yeah we've got a great relationship. But she actually inherited the house, and my my rock security, which was my right. house in Penzance, was taken away from me. <laughs> so I think pretty much that's where my attachment to sort of security and material goods and it's actually taken me Jen like um 25 years to unpick that because mm. you know like um career all although that got in the way then I started having babies throughout my third my 30s were just like pregnant bringing up small children yeah then getting divorced <laughs> It doesn't um, matter. <laughs> but yeah, it's but it's it's I, I can't emphasize how um how important it is to really understand what's going on in your head. And mm. about, like we've all had these traumatic experiences happen in our mm. lives. Um and as you said, like a trauma to you may be a different level of trauma to me. Like your cat mm. dying might have been the biggest trauma you've ever had in your life, but it's still a big trauma to you. So, mm. um, and, and I think what you're describing beautifully there with your journey, and do you know what? It doesn't matter if it's taking you 25 years to realise that a lot of people don't in their lifetime. Mm. But what I'm hearing from you is actually a bit of financial insecurity. So as in something, you know, fundamentally what happened when these tragic events happen, we lose that sense of security. We lose that sense of knowing how the world works. Yeah. Like, what do I do? I don't have my mum and dad. Yeah. You know, like literally it's all, and then you could say, well, that was like, then you moved to the house being the security thing. And so for you, it, the shift was, well, money is now my security. So actually this thing, this external thing will make me feel secure. And it sounds like what you're actually describing is a journey where you've rebuilt the security mm. um and i think in life we learn the lessons that will or what we make of situations there's lessons and beauty in it i do i don't think like anything is meant to take us out i think there's actually if we get through it you know if, if we, we get not the willpower but you know if that just that inside of us that you know god spirit universe whatever something that says you're going to make this through you're going to get through it I think it's because the lesson at the other end when you look back they, mm -hmm. they say that life isn't lived forward it's look it's, you realize that looking back what sense it makes and I actually see that you know you've been able to gain your security from shifting it from money to yourself again mm -hmm. from the inside out so yeah who cares mm -hmm. that in 25 years you've learned the lesson that's yeah. incredible yeah, yeah, and you're you're right. I'm very grateful that I've that I've you know realised it. But I've ended up setting up a business which is surrounded mm. about money. So that's really interesting. That that was you know what I chose to you know go self employed with. Like, but the but and and I think maybe the fundamentals of why you set up um, Mama Fafa and why I set up this is Mummy Penny was I I just had this idea one day of. I help my friends with money all yes, every exactly. day. Yeah, I'm yeah. the go-to person for debt consolidation or for the best mortgage deal. So then it was like, oh, if I can do this for my friends, I can do it for the world. And that Absolutely. was where it came from. I yeah. wanted to help people. Exactly. And that's it. So it doesn't happen that happens to be money, but why not talk about the thing that you know uh, so much about anyway exactly. yeah but exactly yeah. It, it's just that kind of an idea of something that you you could give to service to the world so I'm the same it wasn't 
about create you don't even envisage creating a business you just go I'm just going to talk and I'm going to help somebody else on this journey and you know if, if in life you just get to help one other person I think people forget the ripple effect I call it the ripple effect in life like for example even if only one person listens to this imagine then that perhaps they're you know they go and show up and be a different parent or a different worker or something and then there's their children so then you've got that multiplying effect you never know it's like a little domino you never know so we should never disqualify you know sharing our journey or offering a hand to somebody on on the same path as us yeah and and the other thing about sharing our journey because I know you've you've put out some incredible content talking about what you went through two and a half years ago is just Mm. whenever I listen to your story it makes me cry because it's just so oh it's just so tragic it's so like I mean it it happens to so many people so I I will pop a link to um our sort of interview from 18 months ago and also listen to um the interview you did with Pete Matthew our mutual friend um a few weeks ago um because you're not ashamed going back to that word of shame of talking about what's happened to you uh which is so so important because what we have is this incredible power of we have been through some very traumatic experiences very Mm. and we are sharing that with our audiences and there will be so many people in our audiences who have been what you've been through whose parents have died who have got divorced who are having issues with their children that will (laughs) really and and it's just that knowledge I remember when my mum died I remember thinking why am I the only person in the world whose mum has died and that's that's how I felt for a very long time and just knowing that there's somebody else in the same situation as you absolutely absolutely and I think why I feel it's important to talk is I want to be someone who can say okay the path that comes out of these situations is not predetermined Mm -hmm. so like my situation was it was called an acute psychotic episode basically I can remember the lead up to it I was very anxious and worried one night I thought that my time was up but not in the way that I was going to do something to myself it was that I was going to heaven so I was just going to go and walk out on the street I was going to like catch the bus I'm just like I'm away but the thing is, I got exposure then in a hospital through um, being a section of meeting so many people who felt that life was predetermined for them. They'd maybe been drug overdose, al- alcoholism, um, trying to you know hurt themselves in some serious way, a whole walk of life. And what I realised was I could only con- control how I was going to come out of that situation. And I would rather be the one person saying to someone, OK, if you want some hope that you can come out of that um, situation, medication free, um, rebuild your life, create anything. Like if you want just one person to show you that that possibility is possible, then I'm cool to rise up to that. And I think it's all about hope sometimes. You, you don't, when you're in those situations, if you can just find one person that has gone through similar but actually they've said, you know what, it's going to be okay. And I can mm-hmm. uh, I can remember one time in my life where it has felt the world was falling apart. Mm-hmm. And I distinctly remember a peace coming over me. And I remember in my thought was, it will all work out in the end. Mm-hmm. No idea, you know, that could have been my subconscious, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I can remember that reminding myself that this may seem really hard right now, but I promise, like, just keep going to the good just you wait and see and now yeah. looking back you know two three years later or whatever I go okay did that that thing if I wasn't there well I wouldn't have had this sort of thing I wouldn't have had that do you see there's a ripple effect yeah. um so, so and, and, that, and that's why I can always say to anything like just try and say you know I could help someone through this yeah and give them that ray of hope which means instead of thinking that that's them they can't go on that they actually go no I'm going to live another day I'm going to live another week I'm going to live another month yeah um I um last weekend or two weeks two weeks ago um I was down in Exeter for the weekend and um I one of my friends Cleo who lives there she's a psychotherapist but she's a friend she's not my psychotherapist 
um yeah. but I popped to her house for coffee and I ended up staying for four hours um <laughs> <laughs> which very much delayed my trip back to London from Exeter because it's bloody miles away but um we she said just this incredible thing to me so like I've, I've got some stuff going on with um my family that's all I'm gonna mm. say on it and um she obviously knows what's going on and she said Lynn what because she and she knows about my mum as well so she was like what you need to realize is that the situation that happened with your mum was quite final as in she died and hope was taken away um in in what concerning my mum specifically but the situation I've got with my family at the moment like nobody's died and she yeah. said what you have to grasp onto Lynn is there's hope that it Absolutely. will resolve itself it might take a year it might take 10 years but you've always got that hope and you have to mm-hmm. that's it's almost like that's the only thing you can clamber onto yeah exactly it's, the um, future's not determined yet and I think that's what we like whatever you're facing like if we talk about money so let's say you've got that 50 grand on a credit card and there's people banging at the door let's even say there's people coming to reprint possess your house you have it like we're, when you've got a family and you're literally worrying every day you know is this the last day in our home this is not the fine there's not only one outcome yeah. like the the world the universe however you want to phrase it things will always work out for their good um, if you think about nature itself we often look out to nature and say oh you know the flowers will keep coming up like I don't need to worry that if I cut, we've got a, a mint plant that's just down there. I chopped that right down like to nothing and boom, it's all back within a couple of mm. like nature and the world will always come back mm. just when we think it's stripped back. And I think we forget that we're only seeing through things through our experience rather than the fuller picture. But yeah, that's so important. The one percent, one percent is all you need. Yeah, and and specifically about the the financial situations because um, uh, you've 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 paid off debt, haven't you? Yeah, you've yeah. You've, yeah. you've you've experienced it very much. So, like I have, um, if if I think back to the lowest of the low, where I was probably at fifteen grand in debt, um, which was too much for me. Two right, grand yeah. in debt can be too much for some people. A hundred yeah, grand, absolutely. Too much. I'm not talking about levels of debt, but when I hit that lowest of the low, when I couldn't afford to pay the mortgage the next month, that's when it got really wow. yeah. bad yeah. for me. Um, how I actually got out of it is quite interesting. So um, I um, have worked with Pension B for a long time, and what I did was I called the marked CMO and said look I'm in an absolute pickle with my money can you pay me like um three invoices in advance and he did wow. Like, wow. <laughs> it's um and and I, I reached out to the right person to help but um and 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 then I almost like that was almost like the trigger point of where I set a different intention mm. and intentions are really important word with money isn't it but absolutely no matter how bad you're feeling um and you're thinking about money like debt 50 100 times a day there is always a way out there are always people that can help you yes so if exactly. you are in a debt situation uh, people like step change um citizens advice bureau christians against poverty are yeah. incredible charities who will help you um samaritans like like if if uh, so i need to call yeah. somebody right now i can call samaritans absolutely and even just as you say like even a friend you have that is a confidant you know if it a lot of things that we get into and it is to do with debt or just having habits that we know aren't serving us that's all it is it's just it's kind of like the good and the bad oscillation right it's kind of like even with health if 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 you look in the mirror and say i hate my body i i'm ugly well the it's going to oscillate in your head that you believe that more and more it doesn't matter what you look like you're telling yourself that the same with debt, there's going to be certain habits. If you're spending more than you earn, the maths is never in your favor. Like even if you earn 100 grand or 10 grand, doesn't matter. So I think it's like anything, there is ways out. And actually probably the sooner that you know that these habits, oh, I need to, I need to change something here. The sooner that you reach out for a helping hand, 
very quickly the world will give you your miracle i've usually found they'll usually you know like you'll have the inspired thought to phone this person or mm. like the world is very good at giving you a miracle when you're looking for it yeah if you put that if you put that we're not we're not we're not talking about magic here. We're actually no, not at all. having conversations with people. Yeah. Yes, um, exactly. And from the inside out, it's it's kind of like, sometimes they call it like in the eye of the hurricane. I don't know if you've ever heard of that philosophy. So the hurricane, obviously, if you're on the outside, it's, it's you know, it's yeah. causing destruction. But in the very eye of it, it's mm. peaceful. It's calm. And I think, that is it, the greatest thing you could do and I wonder actually in your circumstance with the mortgage I wonder if actually it was a shift from okay this is happening the focus I can feel it busy to going right I'm just going to shift what is some action I can take that I've got peace about or what's something that feels that I could do and that's when you get the miracle that's when you get the insight that's when you get that right person that's yeah. when you get the right message at the right time yeah yeah god I'm yeah very grateful so very grateful to them for helping me in that situation yeah it was it was awful um but um yeah if you just referring back to a previous episode so episode four of this podcast which is on debt where I spoke to again our mutual um colleague uh Sarah Williams yeah um yep. Sarah Williams uh debt camel she yes. she we recorded possibly the longest podcast in the world it was like an hour and 10 minutes <laughs> but, Amazing. Oh my gosh, it was packed with so much information and and it was different levels of debt so it was part one was if you have like controllable debt where you can afford your monthly repayments uh, then it was part two was if you can't afford your monthly repayments but you can make some changes to create yeah. some extra money and then part three was you can't afford to pay your minimum payments and you can't afford to pay essential bills like um, mortgage, council tax, you know, the ones where if you don't pay, yeah. they can't put you in prison. Yes, um, yes. So it was it was just a wealth of information that um, wow. she was, she's just, she's she's incredible. She's been like a debt advisor for like 15 years or something. So she really knows her stuff. Beautiful. Yeah, um, I've, I've been so lucky with the people I've interviewed for this season of the podcast. I've, I, I literally, I went through the chapters of my book and I was like, right, who is the ultimate expert on each of these subjects? And I like spoke to every single person and every single person said yes. Meant to be, meant to be, what a lineup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so oh, it's, it's really good. So who did you have instead of me? Who would normally teach me? <laughs> no, you're obviously my first choice for healthy body. Am I, can we touch on healthy body, actually? Because what, what you, you um, raised a point, which I want to refer to, actually, which is, um, it, it's relevant for this, but um, back, in, um, back in January, February of this year, um, I was in a really low place. You know, it was that really horrible lockdown time where we didn't know what was happening. Mm. Um, there was really bad stuff going on with my family that I had no control of. Um, and um, I I began to binge eat. And right. um, so I... So, I have, I, I'm, I'm very aware that when I'm in stressful situations, I turn to food and I turn to spending money. So I'm an emotional eater and I'm an emotional spender, which I am feel in control of better at the moment. Um, but um, yeah, so I put this Instagram post out in February where um, it was, it was one of those honesty posts. It was a full picture of me as mm. you know, head to toe in a dress basically saying I haven't posted a picture of me for six months because I absolutely hate myself this is what I look like I'd, I'd yeah. put on like two three stone you know I'd wow. gone from like a size 12 to a size 16 um and I just I just would look at myself and would hate myself and I know that's a really terrible place to be um but how I actually shifted my mindset with that, I think is more of the sort of positive story we, we can talk about because at, well, actually the response to that Instagram post was about 300 comments from oh, people no. saying, Lynn, you are beautiful. You are an incredible person. Uh, it's just not one negative comment, honestly. And you know what our world is like, Jen. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Particularly when it's about how you look. Yes. But one negative comment I had loads of private dms um it was just beautiful but um so that was almost like the starting point of okay 
I can I can you know shift things along and I, but I didn't sort of seriously start it until summer so June July mm. of um yeah June July um I had a hypnotherapy session wow. with I don't know if you've ever tried hypnotherapy but it's something that works works quite well for me when it comes to weight and mindset okay um, yeah I only had one session um with with my friend Heather so she's a friend and a hypnotherapist um and um that's the trigger I needed like I started going to the gym I turned to healthy eating drinking more water I cut out caffeine um mm. and <laughs> tried to cut out sugar not that great <laughs> cutting out sugar. um I had a month off the booze in like yep. September October and I have lost I don't want to focus on weight but I am going to focus on weight uh, well, no, I'm I'm back down to a size twelve. That's amazing. That's incredible. Well, I've shared, Good, but all but the it's the but it's the the switch though that hopefully mm. is a lifetime habit, right? Yeah. And like anything to do with um, anything, it can be like we're punishing ourselves, I suppose, a little bit like the overeating is seeking comfort, isn't it, and things like that. When, but I suppose in your case, was it maybe that you knew you were full? So your natural triggers were saying, "No, you are full," but you just felt that you had to keep oh, yeah. eating. Yeah, so that that's it was almost like a way of comforting yourself beyond when you knew that mm. you were okay. I think I know I actually saw I think you shared your updated gym pick, I think, at some point. Yeah, like for the comparison. I just you know what? I just think it's incredible because yeah. it it we shouldn't either equate our weight, a number on the scale with our worth. It all comes back to security and insecurity, right? And, and just as a bystander I just think you look incredible anyway I think you've always got a smile on your face you just I, I know that I could talk to you so Aww. you know what, whatever shape I know that you you deserve to be happy you should be happy there's nothing wrong with you at all yeah, but like why why have women in particular got this huge hang-up about our body shape and oh. being fat and I I just can't get to the bottom of why it's such an issue for me like that's a, such an adult you know it's, it's so many so many women and actually mm. not men as well but it just feels like it's it's a huge issue for women and we've got this incredible like body positive movement of mm. um oh these amazing women people like um helen wears a size 18 my friend helen thorne um alison perry's another really good one um who are putting out this amazing content, like celebrating their size. Uh, Brummy Mummy of Two is another really good one. And they always yeah. look incredible. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I still, I, and, and I, I don't follow people on Instagram who, you know, post pictures of six packs and stuff. I, put, I follow real inspirational people, but I, I still can't get around it. And I know a lot of women are like me. It's, it's a strange it's one. I just moved to the space which, so like you I just turned 40 last month so oh. not that but I know as well like having two children my body isn't the same way that it was but this is a journey actually I've been on as well I know that I feel that I'm looking after my body like this is the only thing I've got to travel in the whole of my life right I want mm. it to survive I want I don't want it to be bruised and battered and worn on the floor once I'm done and so I've just kind of had the, this construct that I like to work out. I walk, so I, I lift weights. I do weight training. I really love weight training. I think it yeah. changes, you know, you feel stronger. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think everything kind of tightens in the way you want it. I love walking. So I am not the girl. If you've got cake and you want me to run for it, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'd rather walk five kilometers or 10 kilometers or something. And so I actually, I've been on a journey more with, that actually what feels good, what energizes me with my work, you know, with my workouts. I need to, I need to look after this body. And that yeah. does involve movement. If you're sedentary, I'm sorry, it, it is gonna, you're gonna just end up with um, bones not in the right place, like over time. And, and interesting to share, actually, my dad had a career as an engineer. So I'm an engineer too. He was an engineer. And um, he just turned 70 last week, actually, that story as well. But his career was at a desk working in the power engineering and project manager he retired uh, when he was about 55 and from being very active badminton all that the past 15 years really it led to him being more in a you know sitting down my mum doing quite a lot of stuff 
not getting up to work every day you know you're just you're living that retired life what happened was because of how he was sitting in a chair has been his now I've got pictures his basic alignment was like that one hip higher than the other now there's no physical deformity he wasn't born with anything this is literally the power of sitting all day and sitting out of alignment something you might never think about Um, and it came to like over the past years it's just been getting worse and worse so much so that last year in October he was using two sticks to walk like a hundred meters like this was just going worse and worse and my philosophy is always there's a one percent chance we can cure something that could even make it slightly better so I'm not saying I've everything can be cured what I'm saying is we can make your experience better Mm -hmm. and again I attended an event I actually attended a Tony Robbins event um, online and they brought out this posture alignment expert right so we're all doing it and this light bulb in me goes I wonder if they could help my dad you know I wonder if this is the thing and I went around to my dad and I said I would really love to give this a go would you trust me? Yeah. I'll come every day together for a month. We're going to do these exercises together. I'll pay. Don't you know again? Because that's sometimes a trigger. They don't want to pay for things that will cover that another day. Um, I'll pay for it. I can tell you in the space of four months with working one to one with someone once a week and working with me, my dad walked five kilometers without two sticks. My dad. It's not perfect. There's still that limp. There's still a little bit of alignment. He now, we went on holiday to Blackpool, was walking everywhere, five, six kilometres the whole day from being with sticks 100 metres. And this is, this is what probably is a better way. Why is the media obsessed with the thinnest, prettiest? Well, because, again, it's an external validation of your worth. It's the same as money. It's kind of like mm-hmm. you can only, we can only worship a millionaire. Apparently a millionaire is the person that is meant to be the best person to understand how money works. No, they just made a million pounds. That's how, that's what happened. It could have been anything. And so the best advice with your body, maybe this is what you're on as well, is just about making you feel the best you can. Yeah. It really, like, if you're a size eight or size 28, it's really about your feelings, about your thoughts and about yeah. then how you show up. So like on your journey, I'm no doubt like what, like who cares whatever you, you know, weight says or what size in the, the, the shop that you fit into. Mm-hmm. I, I can see the, the ripple effects, like mm-hmm. just a new post in the difference. Mm-hmm. You can actually see that you're showing up differently. You may be a bit more badass. Maybe that's it. You're like, yeah, I can bench press more than you weigh now. But that's again, another beautiful life lesson that if you hadn't have had that starting point, all back in January well who knows what a year two years maybe you're going to be the next crossfitter or something we never know <laughs> but that's a journey I'm on too that I just know I need I like strength work because that's going to mean I can hold my body up I like cards you know walking because I feel like that's important so I think it's more that you you start to dissect everybody else's opinion from actually your own that matters yeah. the most yeah and another another it, it was turning 40 was another sort of point for me where I had a big like re, rebirth let's call it a rebirth rebranding no. <laughs> I, I, I changed up everything around that age um like literally to the point where I got rid of my ex-husband <laughs> That's quite severe. We wouldn't recommend that for everyone. I'm not recommending that unless it's totally appropriate. Unless it's needed. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm much happier <laughs> with with without. Um, oh, but it's it's been a tough journey. Oh my gosh, like the last two years of just divorce was harder than the death of my mum. So, wow. but I've not really talked much about that. Mm. Uh, maybe that's your maybe that's your hand of hope now for the next chapter in your life that yeah. you, need to share. you never know when you're ready yeah it's always difficult though isn't it when there's children involved so mm. oh and and court orders as well but there we go <laughs> um but um yeah it's uh what I was going to say about I can't remember where I was going with my um your 40 year rebirth Oh my, um, yeah. So it was about, it was about, I was going to talk about Maslow actually and Maslow's hierarchy. Yeah, that's right. So um, 
I've, I've been doing a lot of, I've, I've always loved Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Like the moment I learned about it in A-level psychology, I was like, this is the best psychological theory that exists. <laughs> So it's this, like, if you look on my Instagram, I posted um, a, a creative of it, like, last week. And it's a little pyramid with all yeah. these different levels. Top level is the holy grail of self-actualization, who I'm not sure anybody actually consistently is at self-actualization. I think you maybe hit it at points, but right. um, I, you don't stay there, but um, in my view. But the basic level is water, sleep, food as yep. in good food and, and shelter exercise. oh is it exercise as well wow mm. that's exciting mm. so um without level one we're screwed we're nothing yep. you, exactly. you have to have your health and um because of risk factors for me with my parents with hearts because they both had heart attacks uh my sister has just had a heart attack my brother had a stroke a few years ago um then um there are risk factors so i absolutely my weight does need to be under control mm. i cannot be a smoker i'm not a smoker i cannot drink too much um i have to do exercise like you say mm. i have to do weights because i need to keep my bones strong um yep. In our forties, like I'm, I'm. This is all being going through at the moment, but I'm. I think I'm in perimenopause. Okay. Yep. So that's you know the next stage we go through, where particularly like bone strength is really, really important. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Oh, and yeah. remember, everything's an investment. Also, so everything you do today is an investment in your future. We, I would want for the same for me, my family, everyone. I just want you to be able to go through life not having to worry that something physically is stopping you from being who you want to be or what you want to live. So I think that this the sooner that we kind of set up these great habits that we know make sense, that we know we want to look after our body. Because I think in my own journey, it gets to a point, particularly with maybe carrying, if you feel like you're carrying excess weight, it feels heavier to move around. Mm -hmm. It feels more lethargic. And I think actually you notice when you're maybe focusing on your your eating and your you feel like you've got more energy to go out and do things and it's easier that's just yeah. that was my experience anyway so it's something that yeah it's, it's a no brain like I have to do my weight lifting and my yeah. it's just part of it so I can show up in everything else really yeah yeah and going back to the original the very first question I asked in this podcast which is um healthy wealth body and mind like what what do you sort of sort out first so <laughs> I think we've very much so established like the mind um, yes. and then your physical health should then flow on from your mental health but then um or almost like sort out your physical health at the same time as your financial health because financial health is so important it's so so important um and it's different things to different people like personal finance yes. is very personal but if you are in unmanageable debt it is going to affect your mental health like absolutely you can't yeah. ignore the facts of one of the biggest causes of um suicide in this country is financial difficulties um ad addiction addiction to gambling uh yes. which causes um financial problems addiction to spending which yeah. causes financial problems so um yeah you you really we as a as a nation really need to embrace therapy is mm. good um counseling is great um i know there are huge problems with getting it in this country if you can't afford it uh, mm. but you can get on lists you can talk to your doctors you mm. can reach out to charities you can reach out to the samaritans there are all these um resources available to help you absolutely you not suffer in silence it's, and even just uh, i remember in life whenever i've gone through difficult things even just going on youtube and searching mm. you know or google like if you if you literally just want to feel like there's one person who's mm. made it through or or found something that you could grasp upon look for that one hand of hope google is a phenomenal tool <laughs> and so literally you could search and see how has anyone got through this um and you know 99.999 percent of the time or if not 100 somebody will have got through it and you can just say okay i can latch upon that strategy i can try that and with financial habits 
this is what I see a lot of. And if you can even confide in one other person, um, one of the greatest things that I do in my channel and how I teach about money is I literally maybe will take someone spending their budget and I'll look at it as a third party. Yeah. And sometimes that, and you, I think you had um, the lady from Much More With Less, like, yeah, um, I can't remember yeah. her first name, sorry, Faith, Faith um, and she looked at your budget as a third person. And that can sometimes be the greatest eye out there. So what will happen normally is a viewer would send me in their budget and they'll give me their goals or the things that they would like to make happen. 100% of the time so far, I have been able to find money in their budget and their spending to make their goals happen. When people aren't willing to share how they're spending and doing things, that's when there tends to be something more deeper that they're not wanting to, you know, actually there's some habit or mindset. So it might well be that if you feel like it's really tough right now, it is phone up, you know, a charity or just some, a friend and say, look, can you look at, how I'm budgeting or how I'm spending yeah. and could you just be honest and yeah. they might say well actually can you've spent on Amazon quite a lot but you've not been able to pay your mortgage I think you need to close down your Amazon account to be yeah. right that you know it can be something like that um and even in terms of you know if the numbers don't balance what's on my heart and I know that there's lots of different families struggling in different ways the greatest thing I can tell people, and I want to ignite in people, is the amount of money that you see in your world right now is never the limit, okay? So mm. the wage you get or the universal credit that you get or any of these things is never your value. Mm. There's no limit to your value. It sometimes can be just somebody saying to you, I, I believe that that business idea in you or that way of doing something, that's it and follow it. And I can't really stress that enough. It, it will feel like the, the world is there's no option. But I get, there could be one way that you could just bring your talents or your skills into the world that then skyrockets, you know, and changes everything. So um, I think I, I more want to ignite that kind of sense of dreaming again or just thinking that anything's possible in people, yeah. especially with money. Yeah. And just think about that. We've all got something that we are passionate about. Mm. It might be crochet. It might be dogs. It might be, I don't know, making glittery things. Yeah, absolutely. But if that is what floats your boat, what ignites your passion, then yeah. you will love doing it and you will wake up every day and want to do it. Or maybe it's, you know, something you do for a couple of hours in the evening. That's how we yeah. both started. Yeah, exactly. It was a side hustle. <laughs> oh, God, so. now, in our situations, yeah, we both had debt and you just had to get imaginative. And yeah. I think maybe that was um, a great thing for me. I kind of never believed that anything wasn't, possible you know I just always believe that you could do whatever you wanted in a good way um, yeah. and so that that sometimes when we, it feels like circumstances are controlling us it's just for someone else to say actually do you know what we can do think come on let's just believe in that miracle we're going to try yeah. what's the worst that can happen <laughs> yeah Jen how do people find you uh on the internet on the internet um yes yeah, so you can find it on the world wide web um yes yeah, so you can find me on youtube um jennifer kempson and you can find me under mama Furfer if you look there you can also find we've got a podcast called the prosperity project on all platforms and also youtube and i've got some books and courses and all beautiful stuff like that so yeah lots lots and lots of things uh yeah so do go go follow oh and you're on instagram as well don't yes you? i am yeah. yes <laughs> and instagram at my mother get me everywhere <laughs> well you saw make sure you does it, it doesn't it does like it's what you focus on I, I I do focus on Instagram and I don't focus on YouTube so we're almost opposite um, <laughs> but no thank you ever so much that was an amazing discussion I knew it was going to be incredible um thank you ever so much for coming no on to season four maybe exactly. you'll come back on for season five I can't wait when you've got your TV series. I just want to be in that dream. <laughs> that's that's so well, when I've got my um, channel four TV series, <laughs> I will get you on and I'll interview okay. bloody TV. <laughs> <laughs>